Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to talk about insect antenna. So let's start with what is an insect antenna. The antennae are a pair of mobile jointed appendages which also serve as sense organs and they are located on the insect's head capsule usually between or below the compound eyes. Although they are commonly called as feelers, the antennae are much more than just tactile receptors. They are usually covered with olfactory receptors that can detect odor molecules in the air. So they have the receptor molecules which would bind to the odor molecules taken from the air and that would give them the sense of smell. So it is somewhat similar to the purpose that our nose serves. Many insects also use their antennae as humidity sensors to detect the changes in the concentration of water vapor. Mosquitoes detect sound with their antennae and many flies use theirs to gauge air speed or wind speed while they are in flight. I am going to talk about this topic in three units. In the first one, I am going to talk about the functions of insect antenna. In the second part, I will talk about the structure of insect antenna. And in the third part, I will talk about various modifications found in different insects. Now let's start with functions of insect antenna. As I said before, these are sensory receptors for touch, smell, taste, vibration and humidity. So insect antenna carry the sensory receptors which would help in perceiving these senses. Let's talk about specific functions served by antennae. Mainly the antennae serve to perceive the environment. So all these cues like odor, humidity, vibration, sound, wind speed, etc. are perceived by the help of the antennae. Antennae also help in finding food or detecting the quality of the food in many insects. For example, in flies or mosquitoes. Many insects find their mates with the help of their antennae. For example, the female moths release some pheromones which are perceived by the male moths with their very elaborate antennae. Many parasitoids and parasite insects find their host for oviposition sites with the help of their antennae. Many pests find their host plants or host animals with the help of their antennae. Antennae also help in perceiving danger by perceiving vibrations mainly. Also sometimes the odor molecules also help in insects to detect the presence of a predator. In some moths, the antennae are so elaborate in structure that they also play the role of secondary sexual character. In social insects, the antennae help in communicating between the members of a colony. If you have ever noticed a trail of an ant, you might have seen that the ants always antenate the substrate while walking. That is, they touch the substrate with the antennae. What they really are doing here is that they are detecting the pheromones released by the ant preceding that ant. So, the ant while walking they release some pheromones which get attached to the substrate and the ants who are following the first ant or the ant we are talking about they would perceive those chemicals or the pheromones with the help of their antennae so you see how they help in following one ant and in other social insects each member can communicate with others with the help of their antennae so now in the second unit, we are going to talk about the structure of insect antenna. The typical insect antenna is a many jointed filament. But generally, there are three principal parts that can be distinguished, distinguished in its shaft. There are three main parts. The first part is the scape. Second part is the pedicel. And the final part is known as the flagellum or clavola. 
the base of the antenna is set into a small membranous area of the head called the antennal socket. The rim of the socket is often strengthened by an internal submarginal ridge formed by an external inflection. This is the antennal suture. Usually, a pivot-like process on the rim of the antennal socket forms a special support and articular point for the base of the skin, allowing the antenna a free motion in all directions. Each antenna is moved as a whole by muscles inserted on the base of the skin. However, in columbola and dipleura, the muscles can be running along the whole antenna except the terminal segment. But in all other advanced insects, the antennae is moved as a whole by muscles inserted on the base of the scape. So the muscle will stay only here in most of the insects. But in columbola and dipleura, you would find the muscle running along the flagellum as well. Now let's talk about the three main parts in more detail. The first part or the scape by which the antenna is attached to the head is usually larger than the others and constitutes a basal stop of the appendage and this part is known as the scape. The pedicel is the second part. It is short and in nearly all insects contain a special sensory apparatus known as the Johnston's organ. Johnston's organ is an assemblage of sensory cells and this helps in uh, understanding the, these are basically mechanoreceptors, so they help in perceiving vibrations and how to move the antennae, etc. Okay, so in locomotion and other such things, Johnston's organ is useful. The flagellum, the part of the antenna beyond the pedicel is known as the flagellum. So this part is the flagellum. The flagellum is usually long and made up of many small segments as you can see here, but it also may be abbreviated or reduced to a single piece like you see in flies. If you see an electron microscopic picture of an antenna, you can see there are small hair-like structures on every segment of the antenna. These are known as the sensilla. On these sensilla, the cells have the receptor molecules which bind with the odor molecules and that gives the neural signaling to the insect and that way they help to perceive the smell. In case of butterflies, this knob-like structure of the antenna, if you dissect that and if you look it under electronic microscope, you would find many scales as well as holes. So in this case, you would see the hair-like structures or sensilla and here you would find the scales and holes. But mainly they help in perceiving smell. Now, in different insects, various types of antenna are found. Depending on the environment they live in or depending on the purpose the antenna serves, there are many variations in form. And that give rise to several distinct types recognized in descriptive entomology. But the basic structure of the appendages is remarkably uniform. So, in all antennae that I am going to show you now onwards would have the scape, pedicel and flagellum. But the flagellum mainly would show many different types of modifications. So, let's begin with types of insect antennae. The first type I am going to talk about is the cetaceous or bristle-like antenna. Here, the segments become progressively slender distally. And they occur in dragonflies and damselflies. You can see this cetaceous or bristle-like antennae are really small and minute. You would not even see it if you are not noticing the head carefully. But if you look carefully, you would definitely see these bristle-like or cetaceous antenna 
on the head of dragonflies and damselflies. That is in order Odonata. The next type is the filiform antenna or the thread-like antenna. Here, the segments are cylindrical and almost similar throughout. This occurs in ground beetles, cockroaches, etc. The third part is the moniliform antenna. It is like a string of beads. The segments are nearly spherical and they are attached to each other with a small stalk-like structure. This is found in termites. Next type is the serrate antenna. Serrate means saw-like. Here the segments are triangular and give and these uh, segments give the whole antenna a look like a saw. So this is the serrate antenna. It is found in click beetles. Next type is the clavet antenna. Clavet antenna is club shaped. The segments become wider distally. This is found in ladybird beetle. Now I am going to talk about the capitate or knobbed antenna. Here the terminal segments are very wide. It is found in butterflies and nitidulid beetles. Now many authors actually club the clavet antenna and the capitate antenna together. But in many books you would find them separately. So, I have given you both types. Here, this is the clavet type or club shaped antenna, and here, this is the capitated type of antenna where you would find the terminal segments of the antenna form a knob like structure. So, they become white only in the terminal segments, but in clavet type of antenna, they make almost a uh, uniform. Uh, thick, I mean, the segments become uniformly thickened, okay, at the end. Or they form a longer club-shaped structure. And here, you would find a knob-like structure. So, this is capitate antenna. Next type is lamellate antenna. Here, this looks like a flag or like a fan. The terminal segments produced on one side, they form large plate-like structures, okay? So, that only the terminal segments here, they form large plate-like structures or extensions in one side. This is found in cockchafers. Next, we are going to talk about flabellate antenna. Flabellate antenna is also fan-shaped antenna. And the majority of segments are extended on one side into large, thin, flat plates and somewhat look like a folding paper fan. So, what is the difference between lamellate and flavellate? In lamellate type of antenna, only the terminal segments would have these extensions. But in case of flavellate antenna, you can see that all the segments would have these extensions. Now, these two are the antennae of the females of family Ripiseridae and this is the antenna of the males. You can see that in males, the antenna are much more elaborate than the females. So, this is a beetle known as Ripicera and in Ripicera, the males will only have the flavellate antenna. The females also have flavellate antenna, but it is not as elaborate as the males. Now, we are going to talk about pectinate antenna. Pectinate means comb-like antenna. The segments are with short slender processes on one side. See, the difference between the flavellate antenna and the pectinate antenna is that in pectinate antenna, the processes are much more slender. This is found in pyrocorid beetles or fire-colored beetles. So, here you can see that it looks like a, the antenna looks like a comb. So, this is pectinate type of antenna. Next type I am going to talk about is the geniculate antenna. Geniculate also means elbowed. Here you would find a sharp bend at the end of the scape. So here is scape and before pedicel 
there is a sharp bend. This is found in ants. As I was telling you a little while ago that the antennae of ants are used to feel the substrate for the pheromones released by the ant walking before this ant. So, this particular shape helps them in perceiving the substrate smell very easily. Next, I am going to talk about the plumose antenna. The plumos or hairy or feathery antenna are found in male mosquitoes. Here the segments bear holes of long hair at the joints. So it gives a very hairy structure in the antenna. The female antenna in mosquitoes is not really plumose type because it is not as hairy or as feathery like the males. So in female mosquitoes, it is usually known as the hold antenna and here it is known as the plumose type of antenna. This one is the aristate antenna. Here you can see this is found in uh, house flies and cyphid flies and here after pedicel, the flagellum is made only with one flagellomere or only one segment. And that segment has a bristle. This is known as the arista. So this type of antenna is known as the aristate type of antenna. It is found in house flies and sylphid flies. Last type of antenna that I am going to talk about is the stylet antenna. Stylet because it looks like a style. The terminal segment is tipped with a large spine-like process called the style. This is found in rubber flies and snipe flies. Now, I hope I have confused you enough and at this moment, you may not remember which one is which. So, let's look at these pictures and recapitulate just once more. This is the head of a dragonfly and here you see a bristle-like antenna. So, this is the cetaceous type of antenna. Here, the antenna is thread-like. So, this is the filiform antenna. Here, the antenna's head is knob-like or catheted antenna. Okay, so as if the antenna has a head. So, this is the catheted antenna. Here, the antenna looks like a string of beads. So, this is the moniliform antenna. Here, the antenna looks like lamellae. So, this is lamellate type of antenna. Only the terminal segments here would have these extensions. And in this one, which has flabellate type of antenna, all the segments of the antennae would have these extensions. So, cetaceous antenna, filiform antenna, capitate antenna, Moniliform antenna, lamellate antenna, and flabellate antenna. Let's remember some more antennae here. This one looks like a comb, so this is the pectinate type of antenna. Here, the antenna makes a sharp bend after the pedicel, so this is the geniculate type of antenna. Here in the mosquito's antenna, you would see a very bush like or feathery structure. This one is the plumose antenna. Here, the flagellomere, the only flagellomere has an arista or a bristle. So, this is the aristate antenna. And here, the last segment or the terminal segment bears a style. So, this one is the stylet type of antenna. So, Pectinate type of antenna, geniculate type of antenna, plumose or feathery antenna, aristate antenna and stylet antenna. So, hopefully by now you remember all the different types of antenna. But please remember that the basic structure of all antennae would be the same. They will all be starting from the antennal socket which will be rimmed with the antennal suture. And then there will be three main parts, the scape, the small pedicel and the flagellum. The scape helps in attaching the antenna with the head capsule. The pedicel kind of makes like an elbow-like structure 
and joins the flagellum with the skin. The flagellum may have just a few segments or many segments. The number of flagellomeres or these segments can vary from one insect to another and that is one species to another and sometimes even within the same species the number of flagellomeres can vary from individual to individual. So I am going to end here. All the information in this video are taken mainly from these two books and this site and I also suggest that you read this paper to get a broader view on the function of insect antennae and the evolution of diverse solutions to odor and perception. Hope you like this video. Please come back for my next video.